if uh, the rules of tensor algebra say that, so delta i j is the only isotropic tensor, epsilon i j k is the second order, is the only isotropic tensor of third order. Similarly, if fourth order, uh, an isotropic tensor k is to be of, uh, 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 fourth order tensor k is to be isotropic, then you need to have, then you need to have a, a there is a relation between that. So, if at all a first order, if a second, and this is a unit, these are unit isotropic tensors. So, any general isotropic tensors would be say some constant, some constant uh, say a multiplied by delta ij or some constant b multiplied by epsilon ijk. These would be general isotropic tensors. And then uh, you have this epsilon delta relation you remember. Now, that relation is only possible because epsilon and delta both are isotropic sensors. So, similarly, if you have a fourth order isotropic tensor, there is a relation that can be written for it and you can write it in terms of a lower order isotropic tensor like delta. So, this k i j m n is related to the delta in this way. So, this can be written. Uh, let us not get into how and why it comes, but a very general relation if you have a fourth order isotropic tensor, you can write this. The issue still is, okay, so this is a relation for fourth order isotropic tensor. Now, uh, What I want to bring up is, uh, I think before I reveal anything more, I will ask you only the question. So, let us do this. Okay, now, we have k i j m n has 81 components, that is 81 unknowns in our problem. Now, we have used this isotropic tensor assumption or this isotropic fluid assumption and after invoking the isotropic fluid assumption, Stokes assumption 2, the number of unknowns is reduced to what value? Okay. Now, if it is, uh, so if it is isotropic, as I said, so if the fluid is isotropic, obviously the terms in the equations properties are going to be isotropic. So, this k i j m n has to be isotropic. If it is isotropic, it can be written as a linear combination of deltas that which I have just shown, which I have just put the equation. So, now looking at this equation, what do you think? How many unknowns are we left with? So, you tell me how many of these, uh, what is the answer? 3. So, why is it 3? Deltas you know. So, what you do not know? Fine. So, what are these lambda mu gamma? These are some kind of uh, fluid properties, right? These are some kind of fluid properties. Now, to simplify further for getting the constitutive equation, what can we do? Uh, this is a relation that is there uh, between the stress and the strain tensor. So, this uh, sigma i j equals k i j m n s m n. Now, uh, sigma i j I have said is it is a deviatoric stress tensor, it is symmetric. Now, why is it symmetric? So, it can be proved. So, if you take a if you take a fluid element, a cubic fluid element where you have a and you if you write the equation of rotation. So, this is d x, this is d y, this is tau 1 2, this is tau 2 1. If you write the equation for the rotation of this fluid element, how what is the rotational equilibrium element equation? It would be about the center of this 
you will have uh, moments, sum of moments equals what is the sum of for a rotational equilibrium what is the sum of moments equal to i d omega by d t rotational inertia or moment of inertia times uh, angular acceleration. So now if you uh, do the write this equation for this what would be the moment of inertia uh, it will I think it is uh, for a rectangle it is b d cube by 12 something like that and then these uh, rotational moments you will have to write uh, all the moments so tau 2 1 multiplied by dy divided by 2 tau 1 2 multiplied by dx divided by 2 if you write all this and if you take the limit that this fluid element is very small so dx and dy are small you will get the equation that tau 1 2 equals tau 2 1 and this can be proved for other directions also this is I am taking in the xy plane if you take in the other plane so you can prove that all the stress tensors uh, the, the stress tensor is symmetric basically so if it is symmetric if sigma is symmetric how is sigma related to uh, sigma ij equals k ij mn right. So if sigma this is symmetric if this is symmetric then k ij mn equal to k j i mn is that correct. Now you tell me when is this j i m n. Now you look at this equation and tell me when k i j m n k j i m n when when is when is this possible when can this be possible k i j m n equals k j i m n what should be the what condition should hold for that to be possible by looking at this equation i equals yeah no no not i equal to j whatever may be the value of i and j k i j should be equal to k j i that is the condition of symmetry. Yeah, but on the right hand side if uh, if this k i j m n equals k j i m n is to hold what should hold on the right hand side yes mu equal to gamma not la lambda this i j m n are separate here i j uh, if you interchange i and j these terms will not change. So mu should be equal to gamma if that is the case so this can happen only if so what do we get here two mu delta i m delta j n lambda delta i j delta m n. So this is what we get now what I want what I, what I have to do is to write the constitutive equation finally right what was that equation sigma ij equals delta i m delta j n because sigma i j is k i j m n s m n right. So this does this strike anything what can be done to further simplify this. the contraction property of the delta that can be used. So you see now all those uh, all those properties we have studied earlier now coming in handy so S M N. So what does this uh, how can you write this further 2 mu what can you write right acceptable uh, what about this one. right. 
So, let me proceed uh, and see this is what we have got here right. So, this is the how the uh, stress tensor is related to this. Now, we can expand it, uh, we can uh, write the final relation between the stress and the strain tensor and uh, we can see this is the final uh, because we, uh, we can recall what was this uh, tau i j that was equal to the pressure part which is the normal stress part plus sigma. So, if you want to uh, now get the relation between the strain oh sorry sigma. get the relation between the stress and the strain tensor this is what you get tau ij equals minus p delta ij which is the pressure part normal stress part and this is the 2 mu sij plus lambda sm delta ij. So, this is what you get this is the final uh, this is finally the constitutive equation for Newtonian fluid we need to uh, now analyze this in the light of the system of equations that we were uh, discussing how to solve it how to reduce the number of unknowns and things like that. So, we have brought down the number of unknowns to SMM, SMM there is a question I mean you are not clear how, how it comes out to be SMM ok. So, you have delta MN and SMN here. So, it can be SMM or SNN anything is fine. What I have done here is I have just uh, written it uh, written that the true forms of Sij, Sij in terms of velocity. So, Sij is do u by do xj plus do uj by do xi the velocity uh, the strain rate tensor and then this is lambda do u m by do xm delta ij. So, this is the constitutive equation for a compressible Newtonian fluid, Newtonian because we said that there is a linear relation between the two. So, Newtonian fluid and now uh, what I want to do is to introduce the Stokes assumption 4 which basically uh, says that it, it basically introduces a velocity uh, a, vis, uh, a special kind of viscosity. So, this is the normal viscosity that we know of and this is lambda which is a special kind of viscosity which comes which uh, basically it becomes important only when the flow is compressible flow and uh, Stokes assumption what it says that uh, it basically says is that if I remember it correctly I think it says lambda equals minus 2 by 3 mu this is the Stokes fourth assumption it gives you a relation between that uh, special viscosity in compressible flow and the normal viscosity. This uh, is actually not that important for us because we will in most cases we will be doing with dealing with incompressible flow situations in this course and also we will be dealing with Newtonian fluids. So, uh, tau ij can finally be written as for an incompressible flow of Newtonian fluid this term do u m by do x m incompressible all of you know it is do u m by do x m uh, is equal to 0 for incompressible del dot u equals 0 for incompressible flow. So, you get tau i j equals minus p delta i j plus mu times the stress tensor which is minus p delta i j plus 2 mu s i j. So, this is what you finally have and now so, uh, this is what I wanted to bring you back to we had if you remember we had seen this uh, video where they remember in the first class they could walk on the water and if they jumped or stopped a little bit did not walk continuously then they would sink. So, what was happening there was because now we have discussed this Newtonian non Newtonian business. So, this is a very um, well known graph it is there in uh, most of the uh, fluid mechanics textbook. So, this linear relation between the strain rate and the stress the stress strain rate is Newtonian fluid, but what this fluid is is basically a viscoelastic fluid or people sometimes refer to it as a plastic fluid. What it does is uh, I just talked a little while ago about memory effect it has a memory effect memory effect means what the fluid does is it stores the information in uh, or the shape or the form in the undeformed state in itself and if the strain is quick uh, strain is quickly uh, quickly applied and removed it can recover the original shape. So, it is not completely elastic, but it is viscoelastic. So, the, the initial shape is recovered only if the applied strain is quickly removed if it is not quickly removed then it goes on deforming. So, it is like this see here the strain rate the higher the slope higher is the rate of strain. So, if you apply it for a short time initially it, it can be recovered at a it applied at a very high rate quickly 
it can be recovered. But if you go on applying it, then at some point of time, uh, that the behavior is not going to be reproduced. So, it is a viscoelastic fluid will recover only if the strain is quickly applied and removed. So, if you walk on the fluid and do not stop at one place and that deformation, you do not continue that deformation, you will not sink. But if you stop at one place, you will sink. So, that is how it works. So, anyway, it is a viscoelastic fluid that is why it was behaving that way. Now, we come back to momentum conservation equation. Uh, we use all this business that we have learned constitutive equation and come back to the momentum conservation equation because this is where we come. This is the Navier Strauss equation for compressible flow. What I have done over is uh, you had this e acceleration equals rho g i plus surface forces. This surface forces was what was the surface force term? this was the surface force term that term has now become minus dou p by dou x i plus dou by dou x j f all this. This is the pressure part static part this is the deviatoric or the move part due to fluid movement and this is because of compressible flow. Now, for compressible flow and constant density what happens for compressible flow for compressible flow this last part. For incompressible, I'm really sorry. For incompressible flow and constant density, this is my mistake. Incompressible flow and constant density, we uh, get this equation because this part becomes zero, and uh, density is constant. So rho dou u by dou minus dou p by dou x i rho j plus mu dou two u i by dou x j dou x j here. Yeah. Now, okay, yes, because you have a double derivative there, so you get a double derivative. Now, uh, because dou by dou x j by, by dou u i by dou x j, because this velocity is a continuous variable, so the order of differentiation does not matter. So, dou u j by dou x j, one of these terms becomes 0. So, you are left with dou u i by dou x j dou x j. Now, do, uh, again, tensor notation very important, you cannot write like this, it cannot be written like this this cannot be written. Uh, if it is uh, the this gives you the impression dou 2 u by dou x j square gives you the impression that there is only one j, j is a dummy, j is a free index, but it is not a free index. So, dou 2 u by dou x j dou x j always make it a habit of writing it like this do not write dou 2 go back to the momentum conservation equation acceleration equals surface forces plus body forces acceleration is on the left hand side rho g i is the body force. Uh, these were the this was the surface force term and all this term has now evolved into all these are all other terms. So, this is the equation and this equation is familiar to you. What is this equation? This is the Navier Stokes equation. It is a this is the workhorse in uh, this is what I would call a workhorse equation for the rest of the course. We are co continuously going to encounter this equation. You want to solve flow through a pipe, Navier Stokes equation. You want to solve flat plate boundary layer, Navier Stokes. It is a workhorse equation for incompressible steady flow or even unsteady flow. You can have a momentum conservation equation, this particular form. So, this is how we come to this. So, you have derived the Navier Stokes equation before, just in a different way. Here, we have done it using indicial notation and we have generalized things. We have looked at second order fourth order tensors we had looked we have instead of just looking at one stress component we have looked at the complete stress tensor in three dimensions so this is basically you move you have moved one step ahead you are taking a more general view of things but this is what it is so navier stokes equation the momentum conservation this is the form so this is one of uh, one of the important milestone here we have reached and now okay now we come here yeah, how many unknowns? Rho, ui, and p pressure. But the then the issue is how many equations? Four equations. This is a vector equation. Four equations, five unknowns. So what can be done? 
because that pressure was not there earlier. Now we have split that uh, stress term, this extra pressure term has come. So now we have 5 unknowns, 5 unknowns, but it is still better than 13 unknowns and 4 equations. So we have 5 unknowns and 4 equations. What do we do? Relation between rho and P. So how do we do that? If it is a gas, it is an ideal gas, we are fine. P and rho can be here. But the problem there again is you uh, that relation, you can use the ideal gas equation, you get temperature there temperature comes in there. So, we have to go for one more equation now, there is no other way. That uh, polytropic process is a pro specific process, what if it is not a polytropic process, right. If the fluid that we are studying is not undergoing a polytropic process, it is going, it is undergoing some other process. So, that way we can. So, as he said, we use a relation between P and rho, yes, but that relation introduces another variable temperature. So, we have to go for one more equation and all of us know what that equation is, it is the energy equation. So, you have to look at the energy equation. 